Road to Success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank. You are listening, caring partner. Tenacity and perseverance are two pillars that our guest this week has been riding on for the last one year in her business. This week, our guest is Abigail Sami of Krisa Enterprises. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank 22, yes. in college, <laughs> and with an enterprise. How did your story begin? It began, I think, through my mother. I will attribute it to her because she listened to a few statements I had in 2011, just after high school, 2012. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I kept saying, I want to start a business of t-shirts. But then I never took it seriously until last year, when now she began this process. She came with the machines, she helped me get a bit, few of them. And then she bought the machines for you? Yes, okay. yeah. So she managed to source a few of them and then others we've gotten over time. And then what happened was, it was everybody in the family doing it. M myself, my brother and my mom. What is Krisa Enterprises about? Uh, Krisa originally just started as Mugs, but then it became a social enterprise. And the reason was because I really wanted to make an impact. Somebody has helped me get ahead in my life, and I felt that somebody else would need the same. Pass it on kind of principle. Yes, a pass it on kind of principle. Let's help each other out. Um, so originally we started with Mugs, but at the same time we wanted to do community service. And the community service was not the usual of, you know, get um, donations, snacks, and then go to a children's home, have fun with them. As much as that's good, at the end of the day, the home is still left with substantial problems when it comes to uniform, food, uh, shelter, those kind of things. And you will leave them with you know, a smile, but at the end of the day, that smile is wiped off when they look and see. We don't have uniform for school the next day. We don't have books. Enough, enough yes. books. It's never enough. It's really. never enough. We cannot feed all the children a, a substantial meal. So that's what I felt I wanted to do. I wanted to give the homes a source of income so that they're self-sufficient and we don't leave them hanging at the end of the day. And at the same time, I have, I'm very creative, so I really wanted to do this. It's nice to create something that somebody will look at and say, this is brilliant. In fact, most of the times, the smile at the end of the day just comes from seeing somebody saying, I love this, this is brilliant. When I get a text back that the person I was giving this gift loved it. Why do you call your company Krisa? It's, it's, a, it's a combination of two names, abbreviation for creative, and then my second name is Sami. Okay. Yes, so okay. the, behind this is we're very creative. Yeah. It's a creative thing you get to, in, if your talent is creativity, then this is for you. Okay. You're able to bring out yourself. Some of the projects that you have uh, are what? Just tell us. We have these mugs. Mm -hmm. um, we started out with mugs as well uh, at first. So the mugs we have uh, from different kinds. There's the magic ones, one that you have to put hot water. Uh, we have the ones with the animal handles. We have colored inside. They're different kinds. We have a range of about 12. Then we ventured into bottles as well. So we have the aluminium bottles, we have travel mugs, we have the ones that children use for school, the juice bottles. And with time we plan to expand into different things, particularly dishware in the kitchen. Yeah. We really want to make a kitchen stand out the way you can customize every aspect of your home, from the way your couch is gonna look, from the tiling in your house, the roofing, the carpets, the, carpets, the, the rugs. The rugs. Yeah. We figured it's time now to get into the kitchen so that when you enter your kitchen, it's not dishes that you just bought because they were pretty, but something that you are able to put in your own creativity. Where do you get your inspiration for the artwork, especially what I can see here? The artwork originally, uh, genuinely I'm already a creative person, yeah. so I have a lot of ideas when it comes to how to make something pretty. Then again, I'm always into what the customer wants, because my creativity is not what your creativity is. Your designs per se, what you like, the colors you are affiliated to are not the same as mine. So I tend to really ask, what do you like? What kind of fonts do you like? I give you a range of choices that we, we're able to bring out the best in you, but at the same time in a very creative way. Who do you usually target? Particularly for the products because they're different. When it comes to just simple mugs, usually we target corporates. SMEs coming up that they can brand their products. Then again, when it comes to gifts, I target middle class. The Why middle, middle class? class? Middle class because it's becoming a very creative society in that respect. 
In other words, they are really wanting to bring out their identity and their creativity in a lot of things. And also because even financially, they're the ones who can afford what I'm producing here. Mm -hmm. um, second also, I target a lot of youth because we really are into gifts. Your friend's birthday is coming up, you need a quick gift. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times you find that when you, when you hear birthdays coming up, you're, oh no, what am I going to get this person? What do they like? But this is something that can be very personal. As simple as it is, it's very personal. And the idea of something personal from somebody makes it even more meaningful. That's so that's why I target a lot of middle class. Abigail, I'm curious, what are you studying right now in, in university? I'm studying law at the University of Nairobi. And how do you balance school and this and your business? Balancing usually takes time. In other words, I have to put time for everything. So at the end of the day, I make sure at least I've covered my schoolwork. I put hours aside that I need to read. So no matter what I was doing during the day, my schoolwork comes first. I need to graduate either way. So at the end of the day, I always have time to read. And then for my orders, I have specific days when I do deliveries. And then I time when I'm going to do the mugs themselves. That way I don't clash. And sometimes, you know, things will come up. There'll be an expo, there'll be this. So what usually it takes is in advance, if I'm aware that I have to plan, when am I going to recover that time? So it's a, ve it's a very delicate balancing act that both need to move and both need to succeed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, it's also, it also requires a lot of discipline. Yes. It? Because sometimes I would imagine money sometimes can overtake. Especially, you know, when it comes to money, this, this paper chasing, and you're going to see good money. There are times the money is so good that I'll forget I'm in school. Mm -hmm. But you need discipline to remember you committed yourself to school. Finish it and finish it well. You committed yourself to this, finish it and finish it well. That mm -hmm. means I really have to keep my focus on school and this at the same time. I cannot let one take my life and then the other one will fall back. It's been a year since you started this business. What is the opinion of your mom, your parents right now? I think my mom is, I think my biggest supporter in the house. Um, not only because she's the one who encouraged me to this, but she, because she's also in business. So she understands the struggles I'm going through and also the rest of my family. They're very proud, but at the same time, they want me to be the same thing, balance. I need to finish school. And my father, is, he keeps saying, finish to finish. He always says, pass to pass. Tell us about your first step. I mean, as a young business, aspiring business aspiring. owner. Well, the first step was just sales. And, you know, the first step is usually where you get a lot of rejection. So if you're able to overcome that the first time, you realize that not everybody's going to say yes. Were you rejected? Yes. I've been, I, I, so many, I've gotten so many rejections. But the good thing is you don't give up. Who were your first customers? My first customers, my friends. Yes. Yeah. So in, I would go to school and I'm like, look what I did. Does anybody want to buy? And then with time, I got into the idea of social media. So I got up a Facebook page, an Instagram page. And I kept telling my friends, follow, follow. And would tag people. And before you knew it, it kept growing. It's been growing. So I'm really happy about that. I think your peers have a lot of influence. Number yes, one, because we also have, we're not as busy as people who are working. One of the things I'd like to talk about is what you, the pillars that you stand on, perseverance and tenacity. And we'll talk about this after this break. Yes. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. Always fight for what we believe in. We fought to earn our freedom. We won the right to choose for ourselves and the chance to control our own destiny. We deserve even more freedom, choice and control to manage our businesses, our money and our lives with ease. To plan, save, and get loans for the goals and dreams we have and stay in touch with those we love and those we relate with. Welcome to Equitel, where money transfer is free. A mobile banking offering where you save, get loans, transfer money, and pay bills. Making life easier. My phone, my bank. Karibu member. Pick your Equitel SIM card today at any Equity branch. To become a member, dial star 247 hash and open an Equity account instantly. Hapo Hapo. Equitel. My money, my phone, my life.
Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week, our guest is Abigail Sami of Krisa Enterprises. Abigail, before the break, we talked about, oh, I asked you about perseverance and uh, tenacity as the pillars that you ride on. Why is that and how did that come about? Well, I learned the first thing is that business is tough. Nobody will ever tell you that it's easy. If you're trying to build something big, it's never easy. So the first thing I learned is I have to be able to persevere through the tough times. I have to be able to keep going even when I'm given a thousand and one rejections. Like if you ask a sales manager, the number of no's they go through to get one yes, it's a lot. And if you're going to give up by the time you're getting five, you're really not going to go far. When you study it, an MBA per se, it will give you what to do, how to do, when to do it. But you have to remember that business is dealing with individuals and people, and people change. So you have to be able to move with the changes. It's not going to be as rigid as you think. It's not going to be as straightforward. You have to be able to bend where you need to, turn where you need to. It's not going to be a straight line. And what are some of the things um, that you've been challenged with uh, being in business for the last one year? The first thing, of course, is if you're doing something else like I'm doing, I'm in school, the first thing is you have to be able to balance. The second thing is when you, if you start out by yourself like I did, getting a team, building that dream with other people, it's one thing. So I've learned that I'm not alone and that I'm not an island on my own. I have to work with people. So I really look for people who I can work with, people who inspire me. I really look towards mentors. Mentors even, they don't have to be physical. You can go online, find somebody who you admire what they've done and keep reading about them, keep finding out more information. Who are you working with? Um, so far I've gotten a team of two and one part-time. I had a photographer, that means when we go for events, if we're customizing on the spot, we need a good photographer. So I got one of my friends to do that. He did it at an event we had just done, I think, a month ago. And then I got a graphic designer. He studied graphic design for three years and he's brilliant. And I also got a sales and marketing manager. Abigail, how are you able to finance your business? Because really, there's so many things that are required yeah, to start a business especially machinery for, 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 for this. So my mom is the one who helped me source some of the machines that we needed and some of the you know small, small equipment such as paper. Um, and what happened was with time, I had to pay that off. So she helped me, but I had to pay it off, meaning in my accounts, I had to make sure I got into break even and pay off. So it, to some extent, it really was not free, but it, it was a good start off. She really helped me push it off. Why do people believe in your dream? Um, people believe in my dream so far because I'm passionate about it. People are inspired by people who are passionate about something. So I'm very passionate about this. I'm very excited about this. I talk about it a lot. And that's why people get in inculcated into that dream. They begin to feel what I'm feeling about it. Um, the second thing is also because I'm young. Being young really inspires people. If people can see that at a young age, you're able to do something with the little you have, then I can do it as well. So that's another thing. And then. Second is because of the aspect of community service. Everybody is looking for a way to give back. And if you can give them that, then they feel that, yes, this is something worthwhile. This is something right. Then I, can, I believe in it. How do you tie the community service with what you're doing? Chris Enterprises is a for-profit social enterprise, meaning a big part of our mission is community impact. So what I do is I use the business to fund different projects. So that is the plan. So in other words, some of the money that we get, some of our profits are directed to different causes. In particular, we deal with children's homes. Mm -hmm. So when I do tell people that, it means that they feel inspired that this is something worthwhile. People know that their money is not just going for somebody to eat it. It's actually helping out someone. And if you think about it, everybody's always looking for a way to give back. People are looking for ways, how can I help? And sometimes just giving them that opportunity, though indirectly, it really inspires a lot of people and it makes people believe in what I'm doing. Uh, tell us the process of putting up um, one of these from, from conception to, to my table, for example. Um, the process starts, I think, with just the customer will you know, talk to me and say, I'd like this and this. Um, after that, I ask them, um, is it a gift? Is it for yourself? Within time, they'll send me the pictures of what they'd like on the mug. So after that, it's, um, I'm working on it on a computer. I give my graphic designer to do it, come up with a creative design. A lot of the times, the customers trust my, my creativity. So they just say, you do it. I know I like it at the end. There are times when, if it's something intricate, I usually communicate with them and say, please look at it, confirm that it's fine before I go ahead and print. 
Um, the process itself is called sublimation, and if you check online, you'll be able to find it. Um, so it, there's a special paper, it's called matte paper. You print the design on it, and then it's stuck onto the object, uh, that's either the mug or the bottle, and it's in a heat press for about two minutes, three minutes, and it's done. How do you compete? With, other, with others. Yeah, because I mean, this, it's really, it, yeah. very many people are doing the same thing that you're doing. What sets you apart? What sets us apart, number one, I believe, is our creativity. I've made it a point that, number one, we do not give substandard. There's no point where we'll ever give you something that is substandard. And two is our creativity. I really make sure that what you get with us, the designs that you get, are not you wouldn't get anywhere else. Because I've seen with a lot of our competitors, what they do is, you give them a picture, they put just the picture as it yeah. is, words. There's nothing really that stands out. And what we want to do is give you something that stands out. Being in business for the last one year, what lessons have you learned? Don't give up. It'll get tough. You will get rejected at times, but you just need to keep going. And remember, the rejection is not personal. If you take it personally, you're really going to suffer. It'll get to you. So you really need to remember it's a business. Business is business. Keep going, keep pushing. If you believe in what you're doing, then keep going. Yeah. The other lesson I've learned is just keep learning. Keep learning from people. You don't know everything. When you think you know everything, that's when you don't know. And what about um, the young people who, who are in business but really are feeling discouraged? What would you tell them? It gets better. It gets better not because it'll get easier, but because you'll have learned a lot on the way. So you'll know how to deal with certain issues. You'll know how to deal with certain problems that will come. Yes, you will, it's, it, we're not saying that the problems will stop. They will be there. However, just keep going because it'll get better because you'll be more knowledgeable on how to deal with some things. And, and how big do you see? How far do you see yourself? I see this business being, especially after we've gotten, we began to do the whole kitchen, your dishware. I really see it being probably we'll even be going shipping to other countries. With time, I also want, I think in the next say a year or so, I really want to stop buying. I would really like to take this international, probably start with East Africa, then move out to Eastern Africa after that. And, and, and it is possible. I'm just, just having this conversation with you, we can see how big your dream is. And, and, and the fact that you talked about tenacity and perseverance being the, being the pillars that you ride on, I mean, you will go very far. There's no doubt about that, Thank Abigail. You. There's no doubt about that. And the fact that you also want to change our society. You, know, um, you want to give the rod as opposed to just the fish. You know, that is amazing. That is amazing. Young person with a lot of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you for being on our show. Thank you very much for having me. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. Dreaming is excellent, but execution is reality. And so the three things that are going to be expensive is you need to do proper market research. Janet Chebet has been named this year's overall best farmer. Chebet was presented the accolade during this year's World Food Day ceremony held in Yamira Town, the venue for the World Food Day 2015 celebration. Si tulipata loan kutoka Equity Bank wakati tuliamua tufanye ukulima. Tuliamua kupanga hizo pesa tukazingatia ukulima in a mixed farming, tumeweza kupanda nyanya ndani ya greenhouse, tumeweza kufuga samaki ndani ya greenhouse na zingine ziko kwa open field. Tumeweza kupanda watamela, butternut ama aina nyingi za malenge. Advice yangu kwa vijana. Wengi wamemaliza shule, wamemaliza colleges, wanangangana kutafuta ile white collar job. But now I miss what we need technology at Kisasa, which is drip irrigation. We find a ukulima, na hapo itawezesha wafike mbali, na wataweza kuwajiri ata vijana wenza. Speaking at the event, 
Nyamira County Governor John Nyangarama lauded farmers in the county for embracing farming as a business. Nyamira, whose economy greatly depends on agriculture, we have put up measures that are aimed at sustaining growth of the agricultural sector. We have identified the subsectors that have the greatest potential to drive growth and reduce poverty. We have also partnered with our people, with our friends, with our stakeholders within and without the country to make sure that this is uh, possible. The World Food Day commemorates the founding of the Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, in October 1945. It is celebrated annually in all partner countries with the aim of eradicating hunger worldwide. The 2015 World Food Day theme was social protection and agriculture, breaking the cycle of rural poverty. We started this organization so that we can encourage our age mate. You can come up with any business and you will, be, you will arrive at somewhere. Because of this, we have created the employment opportunity and we are trying to raise the crime in the community. We as young entrepreneurs, we want to prosper. We are the small monkeys. So far, uh, our my colleagues are here and we are very much happy with equity. They have really made us to be where we are. Farmers who have adopted best practices in food production were acknowledged and awarded certificates and trophies. Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business, where our goal is to see you succeed. This week, our expert is David Miner of Pure Flow, who is here to discuss why competition is important for your business. Karibu sana, David. Thank you for having me on the show again. It's nice to see you. Tell us, why is competition? Most of us are actually scared of competition, or we don't want to know this competition. Why is competition important? I think without competition, we get complacent. But with competition, we have to be, you know, just a little bit more uh, sharper. It helps us to concentrate a bit on where our strengths are and so that we can be competitive. Well, most of the time we're told not to worry about our competition. Why should we worry about them? I should just focus on what I'm doing and become better. You know, most of us want to be market leaders. We want to be the best within our competitive set. And so we don't want to be thinking about the competition all the time or following them because then you won't be a leader if you're following. But I think it's important that we have people who keep us, you know, at the edge of our seats that uh, we know if we get complacent, there's somebody else who could do what we do and maybe do it better. Sometimes competition can hurt us, isn't it? I, I think sometimes competition can get very intense and unless you're getting creative, um, you can get beat at many fronts. So if your competition is beating you on price, on quality, on service, then it can, it can hurt you. Yeah. But the idea is to stay ahead of the competition. Keep thinking creatively. And in some markets where there's heavy competition, you have to get out of the market. Okay, how, and how do you do that? Well, that's, that's how, why today we have an increasing number of companies that are looking at moving into uncontested space space where your competitors are not, or they're not doing well at. Um, so the Blue Ocean strategy is a very good example of how companies are saying we need to think differently, stop competing in the red oceans where all of us are. So if I'm selling glass, for example, and I've been selling glass for the last 10 years, yes. then I decide I need to go now to a blue ocean. Yes. What is it I would be offering my clients? Okay. Yeah, or, my, or my new market. The market you're serving, the more you understand it, the more you get to know what is at the very core of what they're looking for. So if at the core of what they're looking for is to have a good um, drink at the end of the day, then the opportunities become endless. So it's not about providing them with a glass, but providing them with a good drink. Now that could come from a vessel, can come from a dispensing unit, it can come from various other sources and not just a glass. So if you found one of those sources for a nice beverage, a nice drink at the end of the day, 
that could become a new uncontested space where your competitors are not and that might become your blue ocean. So in essence, it's making your niche your core. What is going to drive me uh, into this uncontested uh, market space? If you can answer the following two questions uh, affirmatively, can I do this niche better than anybody else? If the answer is yes, then it can become your core. Two, is my niche able to sustain my business? So it's not just something I do well and is a great value add in my business, but can this become a core product or service that we offer? And if the answer is yes, then yes, your niche can become your core. It's also very expensive. I mean, when you're going to uncontested markets, there's so many things I, sh I need to consider when I'm moving from the saturated uh, markets. Yes, that, that's a very good point. I think uh, it's good to be also realistic. Dreaming is excellent, but execution is reality. And so the three things that are going to be expensive is you need to do proper market research. You need to do a survey of your target market to find out what is this that they, they need that I can turn into a demand. The second area that gets expensive is that you physically have to move. So there's changes of structure, changes in your organizational uh, culture, even the, uh, the skill set and the competency and the capability that you have in the organization. And so you have to prepare for that. The third thing is creating the demand. You have to invest in creation of the demand because remember, people may know that I have a problem but they might not associate their problem with a service and product that you've come up with to be a solution to that problem. Okay, so does that then equal to innovation? Absolutely. It's, it's seeing the need, and like in this case in banking, and saying these people can be banked, but you have to maybe change the cost structure. Don't, don't, don't put marble and, and very expensive fittings all over the place, you know, because they don't, that's not what they're here for. They're here to get service. So equity invested in good systems and they were able to actually get good service to a lot of people very quickly and in not very uh, you know, expensive uh, ways. There are chances that you could fail in the uncontested markets. That's true. If you're not well prepared, if you haven't researched properly, if you don't change fast enough to be able to provide new uh, services and products in an efficient and cost-effective manner, then you might squander the opportunity of the uncontested space. David, as we go into the new year, what advice would you give our entrepreneurs? Change and competition are always going to be there. Don't fear them. Instead, find a new space and create new demand for your own future sustainability. Thank you so much. It's very powerful. And I know a lot of people have heard what you've just said and will implement that advice for themselves. Thank you so much, David. We really do appreciate you. And may we wish you Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, David. Thank you. And to you too and to your family. Thank you for watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. On behalf of the crew of Road to Success, would love to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless you. Road to Success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank, you are listening, caring partner.